za sheria za Mungu baba sabatoni yo mguri za kana sadaka mali yake wewe na ndoa litakatifu tuzirudi njia za imani hello and a very very warm welcome to you to this program the lesson review my name is Kevin Matelong. I welcome my brothers to also do an introduction of themselves. Hello, my name is Robert Omambia. Hello, my name is Boniface Kenani. Thank you very much. We continue with our series, The Rebellion and Redemption Story. Uh, last week we studied a lot concerning Jesus' temptations in the wilderness. And this week we are continuing with similar instances, but now we are going to look at Jesus' teaching on the great controversy. I wish to welcome my brother Kenani to continue from there with the introduction of the topic. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish to draw us to what we covered last week shortly before we can get into the uh, lesson of this week. Actually, we were mentioning about the temptations of Jesus Christ. And one thing I uh, noted is that the devil was tempting Jesus Christ using this question, if you are the son of God, and of course we realize that nobody will want not to be the son of God. Actually everybody will want to be the, like the son of God. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so he was testing Jesus Christ in the line of pride. Such that Jesus Christ could want to demonstrate to the devil that I'm really the son of God. So uh, let us read from this verse uh, as we uh, move to the lesson of today. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. The book of First Corinthians, six, six verse, verse nineteen. 19 the Bible says, "The Bible says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? That you are not your own. So any sense of pride." demonstrates to us that we are our own but the bible demonstrates unto us that we are not our own mm -hmm. let us imitate jesus christ Amen. because he quoted anyway uh, this this week's lesson is uh, entitled jesus teachings and uh, the great controversy so we are going to get down to actually understand some of the teachings of jesus christ and how they relate to the whole theme of the great controversy actually in the whole of this quarter we are measuring uh, on the great controversy. And as we all know, the great controversy is a struggle between good and evil, as we've done in the past, we've known in the past. And so, uh, in this week's lesson, we'll actually be looking at some of the teachings of Jesus Christ on practical life and how they relate to the uh, great controversy. Now, uh, quickly, let us move to the first part of this lesson. Uh, I would like one of us to open the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, mm. Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. And ask for the old paths. Old paths, yeah. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? And walk therein. And walk therein. And ye shall find rest. For your souls and ye shall find rest for your yes. souls actually these are the words of jeremiah as he is calling his brethren to depart from their evil worships and uh, their evil ways to come to the light of jesus christ and he tells them as soon as they come out of these uh, evils they will actually find rest in serving the true god uh, i noticed that in the book of matthew chapter 11 verse 29, Jesus Christ himself uh, is drawing the statement, I'll give you rest. So let us read there so that we confirm from the Bible. The Bible says something. Matthew eleven twenty-nine. 29, the Bible says, The Bible says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. That uh, Jesus Christ is actually telling his disciples to take his yoke which is light, light. Mm -hmm. and he's saying that for he who is Jesus Christ is meek and lowly in heart mm -hmm. and actually by taking the yoke of Jesus Christ one will have rest Amen. so Christ promises rest to his disciples 
what is so special about this rest? Anyway, in the Bible, uh, the word rest is used severally. And uh, as we start even from the book of Genesis, Jesus, uh, God himself, after creation, he rested, having finished his creation. And the resting ushered in what you call the Sabbath worship, which we all know. It is a weekly worship that has always been practiced since uh, since uh, uh, the, 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 the end of se the, 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 since the creation. So, uh, friends, uh, when we go down to the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 14, God promises uh, the Israelites something concerning rest. Somebody to read for us there. 33, verse 14, Exodus. It says, The Bible says, And he said, And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. 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 So uh, this tells me that the presence of God amidst his people gives the people rest. I don't know whether we are getting it from the same, uh, the same side of the coin. So actually, God promises rest uh, unto his children when he dwells among them. Mm -hmm. And that is why when we find that in the story of the Israelites, they used to keep the seventh day, uh, which is the Sabbath day. And also, they could have yearly rests they could also have jubilee rests which were meant for the glory of god mm -hmm. such that when they rest then they are assured of uh, the presence of god with um, 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 among them amidst them we can read from the book of isaiah uh, chapter uh, 57 verse 20 so that we realize that indeed uh, the israelites did not rest when they had they were in the they were in the wilderness okay. somebody to read for us 57 verse 20 the book is Isaiah yes but the wicked are like troubled sea yes when it cannot rest the wicked cannot rest they don't have rest in their heart but those who God is among them they will yes. okay okay we are continuing okay. well uh, friends when we go to the book of Jeremiah, I wish one of us to open for us the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 so that we get some story concerning Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Verse 16 says, Thus says the Lord, Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. That is Jeremiah calling the people to come out from their evil ways that they may enter in the light of Jesus Christ or in the light of God. Continue. Where is the good way? Mm. And walk therein. Where is the good way and walk therein? That is the message of mes uh, Jeremiah. Continue. And you shall find rest for your souls. You shall find rest for your souls. Actually, uh, Jeremiah promises rest for the souls of those who will depart from their evil ways unto the ways of truth. And so, uh, we want to get a fascinating uh, scenario where Jesus Christ uses similar wording to address his disciples. The book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. Somebody to get there so that we pick it up from there. The Bible says in Matthew 11 29, the Bible Take says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am weak Sorry, for I meek. am meek Correct. and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. You shall find rest unto your souls. Jesus Christ promises his disciples that by taking his yoke, they will find rest in their souls. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Bible, the word rest is used severally. And uh, uh, going to the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 14, there is something that uh, catches my attention. Uh, somebody to read for us there. Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. Yes. And he said, God is saying, My presence shall go with thee, that the presence of God will go with the Israelites, and I will give thee rest. And by the presence of, Jesus, uh, of God, then the Israelites will have rest. So there is something peculiar being mentioned about rest here, that by the presence of God, among, among his people, then they will have rest. That is why actually, if you read the book of 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 4, you will realize that when God is with his people, 
there is no adversary or enemy who can attack them. That is why he is promising them that if I go with you, then you will have rest. Well, let us read this book, the book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 20. It tells something about the wicked and rest. Will the wicked have rest? What does the Bible say? The Bible says, the Bible says, but the wicked are like the troubled sea. The wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. When it cannot rest. Whose waters cast up mire and hurt and dirt. Just wait a minute. You know, the wicked are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest. So it means that the wicked people cannot have rest. And God cannot be with the wicked. And so he's saying that when he is present with his people, then they will have rest. That is why in the Bible, we see God himself resting after creation. And then he gives rest unto even his, his creation. He gives rest unto man because he commands him that on the seventh day thou shalt rest the way they actually did. They normally rested during the seventh day. And then you look at the calendar or the activities of the Israelites. They could rest, uh, they could offer some rest after one year. They could offer some rest after Jubilee. And so uh, rest is very uh, important in uh, in our lives today because God is promising to give rest unto his children. Now, looking at the book of uh, Exodus chapter 5, verse 4 and verse 5, we'll actually realize that when the Israelites were in captive, they never rested. But when, was, when, when God was amidst them, they actually rested. I want us to read the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, uh, to see some warning that is given unto us from God. 1411 the Bible says the Bible says revelation and yes. the smoke of their torment mm. ascends up forever and ever mm -hmm. and they have no rest day nor night they have no rest day nor, nor night, night who yes. worship the beast and his image those who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name and whosoever receives the mark uh, 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 and his his yeah. name mm -hmm. that means that these are those people who will not worship God in truth and in spirit mm -hmm. because they will be worshipping something mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. that is why God is calling us unto his rest he's mm -hmm. telling us that come unto me take my yoke and you will find rest why can we neglect this rest that God has given us why can't we draw nigh unto him mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Brother Boniface, for explaining this rest which was given uh, from the Bible. We find that when you read about it, we are reading uh, our series, the theme is about rebellion and redemption. So there is that redemption part of the rest. The rebellion comes where uh, the Satan, the devil, is trying to remove the rest from the people. That's why when they are in bondage, it is where they are not getting rest. Uh, we have just read chapter 14, verse 11 of Revelation, and we are learning that Actually, there are some people who are not getting rest or who will not be getting rest at the end of the, of the world. They will be tormented because of sinning. Now, we move to another interesting and yet wonderful topic uh, about planting and harvesting. When you read the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 8 to chapter, th uh, chapter 13 verse, eight, uh, verse 3 to 8, we find some parable there which Jesus Christ is giving to his uh, disciples and all those ones who are following him. What does the Bible say there, my brother? Matthew chapter 13, verse 3, the mm -hmm. Bible says, And he spake many things unto them in mm -hmm. parables, yes. saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, mm -hmm. and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the falls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. Mm -hmm. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Mm -hmm. and, some f and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Then he finishes in verse 9 saying that, Whoever has ears, let, let him, him hear. hear. Now, it's a very interesting uh, parable there. Jesus is speaking to the people, and I like how Jesus used to teach. 
used to take examples. He, he says that now, take uh, take Adele for example, and he teaches a whole sermon from that. He gives this time an example using a sower, mpanzi kwa kiswahili. So this mm -hmm. sower went forth to the garden. And when you read the history of these people, the Jews used to plant in a, it is called broadcasting. They just come with a handful of seeds, then they just pour it. When they pour it, some go to the, to, to, to the field, some go to the thorns, some go. So that's how it was going. And it happens that there are four groups of, um, Jesus describes some four groups of seeds. He says that a seed, there are some seed which fell by the roadside. The second category went and fell uh, by, the, by the stony places. Another uh, fell by the thorns. And another one fell by the good soil, soil. I mean, the first category, they fell by the wayside. The second category, they fell in stony places. The third, in thorny places. And the fourth, on the good soil. Now, Jesus explains that. He doesn't give us uh, room for speculation. He just goes ahead. When the people are wondering now, what, what is the meaning of this? He went, he went on and explained it in chapter uh, 13, verse 18. What does he say there? Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Yes. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, mm -hmm. then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Mm -hmm. This is he which received seed, seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth uh, the seed into stony places, mm -hmm. the same is he that heareth the word, and anon it, and anon with joy receiveth it. Mm -hmm. Yet had he had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, mm -hmm. by and by he is offended. You can stop there first. He says that there is this first category who are compared to the seed which fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And what happens by the wayside? This is the road. People pass there. So when the birds come, they pick the seed. And Jesus explains that this bird here represents the devil. I believe my brothers have been in a crusade, in a mission, in an evangelistic effort. And you have seen how you go and preach. You don't take the, 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 the speakers and you face them in specific places so that it reaches some good people only. You just face them anywhere, anywhere. and it reaches any anywhere. person. That's now we are broadcasting. It's a great privilege to get that word and also to be trusted by God to be one of the sowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great privilege to be, to, to, to be trusted by God to be a sower, to go and help him in, in broadcasting that, that seed. Now, this seed falls in the wayside and it does not even it does not even grow. The birds come and they take them away. And that represents the devil. Jesus explains there, when you read verse 13, it says, verse 18, sorry, it says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one, and he catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which uh, received seed by the wayside. And then he continues verse uh, 20 saying, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that hears the word and anon with joy receive it. Just imagine when we go for an evangelistic mission and you preach, then you find that 10 people are ready, to, they are ready for baptism. They have accepted the word. Will you be sad about it? You will be very happy about it. Because you have found people who are doing what? Who are ready. They are ready for the, for the gospel. But the Bible tells us here that uh, there are some people who are going to receive the word with that happiness but it is a sad story that they are being compared to 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 to, to being a soil some little soil which was found on a rock mm -hmm. then it continues saying that uh, verse 21 yet hath he not root in himself <coughs> but dureth for a while for then or for when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word by and by he is offended now <coughs> A question there comes. Does it mean that any person who receives the word with joy is going to be compared to that rocky place? Absolutely. No, if you take the example of uh, in the Bible, we have a right example of a person called Matthew. Matthew, when Jesus came, he told him, Come. 
Matthew did not say, no, um, I, I want to, to, to think about these things. He did not sit down and relax then. He thought about it. Then days later, he followed. Take the example of the other disciples also. Uh, uh, Peter. Peter and John. They were fishermen. Mm -hmm. Peter and his uh, brother, they were fishermen. They received the word and they followed Christ. So it does not mean that actually those ones who are going to receive the word and they be very happy about it, they joy in it and they move on with Christ, they are all going to uh, to be compared to these ones who are offended and they left. Mm -hmm. Now the third category now, the Bible says, uh, verse 22, He also that receives the seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back. We were reading from the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 17 the other time. And it says, And a voice came from heaven and said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then when you go to the chapter 4 of Matthew, you are told that now when the devil comes, he asks him, Are you really the son of God? Now, go back again to Genesis. In Genesis, you find the story of Adam and Eve. When God is telling Adam and Eve, there is a tree in the middle of the garden, don't eat from it, the devil comes. Did God really say? It means that Satan is always standby. He's always standby waiting for, he's always no, among the audience. He's mm -hmm. listening. He's listening to the instructions. Even now when you are talking here, Satan is somewhere. And when mm -hmm. somebody is listening at home, he's going to ask that person, did this person really talk about the seventh day Sabbath? So that's how he's coming. The word is preached. There are those ones at the wayside. Just like how the, the, the seeds fell by the wayside. These people receive the word. And because they are so busy taking care of their businesses or what, it happens that the devil comes and asks this person, did he really say? And that's how the controversy is. Um, when you read the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, we are told that, uh, verse 12 and 13, uh, the apostle tells us that for all who are going to live godly lives, they are actually going to face persecution. persecution. And the Bible tells us here that there is this group who received the word and they are compared to the, the seed which fell by the thorny places. When they are coming up, just take a picture in your head of a seed uh, which has germinated. And when the plant is coming up, there are thorns around. It is not going to enjoy. It is going to, to, be, pricked, uh, to, be, to, to be pricked as it comes up. It is going to be it's not going to have a wonderful time coming up. So mm -hmm. that's how it is. When you receive that and you are still holding on to some things, remember Nicodemus in chapter 3 of John, he is told that you have to, to, to be born again. You have to change your life. And he says, what? With all my riches? I can't. Remember that uh, person, the rich young man in Mark chapter 10. Sure. When he, he was told, now go and sell everything, he said, go your way, Jesus, I can't mm -hmm. leave my things. I'm going to stay with them. So there is that, uh, that part of leaving everything before following Christ. So there is this group of people who when they are told now leave and follow Christ, they say no, stay with your religion, I stay with my, my riches. Now, there is this final group, the group number four. The one, the seeds which fell by the good soil. Now, a question there. Which types, uh, how many types of seeds were sown? Four. But no, it's one seed. It is one? It's okay. one seed. It's one, one seed. but it's seed. 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 But it fell in four. Places. Places. And how many sowers were there? One. one. So there was one sower and there was one seed. The seed was just the same. They did not take hybrid. They went and sowed it in a good place. Then they take the others and put it in the, in, 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 by the wayside. It is just one seed that was sown in all those places. But it happens that this one fell in this place and this one fell in the other place. Now, look at this good soil. Jesus explains something there. He explains another 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 preparation work in the backstage he says that there was some preparation of the soil the soil was made prior well the road uh, by the wayside the, the the wayside was not waiting for seeds to come it is the soil which was waiting for the for the seed to come somebody came and plowed mm -hmm. then he made it well he made the soil to be well he put there the lines then the seed fell in the right place so when it comes there is some preparation of the soil. The same applies to human beings. There has to be some preparation of our hearts. And for example, take the example of our, uh, our parents. I know even us, we are going to be parents. Possibly if God uh, does not send Christ early, we might be parents in future. Now, we have a work of preparing the soil 
of our children in future. You are watching there, you have a child, he's young, she's young. You have the responsibility of preparing the heart of this child. So that in future, when the seed comes, the child is ready to accept the word. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge to us. The soil has to be prepared. Even the soil of the heart has to be prepared prior. When the seed comes, the child will be interested. But nowadays, the, child, the child's heart is prepared by the Afro-Cinema. It is prepared mm -hmm. by soap operas and movies, action wrestling. movies and wrestling. Mm -hmm. So when you want to put there a good seed, it happens that there are many thorns. They want to prick the seed out. They want to prick, I mean, the plant and it does not, it does not uh, come out well. Now, well, another question comes there. Mark chapter 2 verse 17. Um, were these people who are compared to the good soil righteous? A question is asked, as you are thinking about that, were these people righteous? Mark 2 17, what does the Bible say? Possibly, you may, you may say that actually this person who received by the, by the good soil was righteous. What does it say? Mark 2 17. When Jesus heard it, mm. he said unto them, mm -hmm. They that are whole have no need of a physician, mm -hmm. but they that are sick. Exactly. I came not to call the righteous. He did not come to sow the seed to the righteous. Mm -hmm. So all these people were sinners. But it happens that there is some sinner who has some good soil. And there is another sinner who is not prepared to receive the gospel. Mm -hmm. So he says, I did not come to call the righteous to repentance, but to the sinners. Um, there is a quote here, I wish to read it. Satan and his angels are in, in the assemblies where the gospel is preached. Where the angels of heaven endeavor to impress hearts with the word of God, the enemy is on the alert to make the word of no effect. So, the Bible says this, that, and God created. What does the devil say? No, we evolved. Mm -hmm. Just look at that. When the God says this, the angels of God are busy, they are busy teaching the people that now, in the sixth day God did this, on the seventh day God rested, another says, no. The devil uses that person to tell you that there is a book called Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 which tells us that all these things were nailed where? On the cross. Now let's continue. Um, with an earnestness equal only by his malice, that is the devil, he tries to thwart the work of the Spirit of God. While Christ is drawing the soul by his love, Satan tries to turn away the attention of the one who is moved to seek the Savior. And the controversy there now is revealed. As the devil is, as, as Christ is busy preparing the soil, the devil is also busy bringing other programs in our television sets. They are a great source of blessing, but they are the greatest source of temptations even to us. Um, we move on to the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. We read something there where the great controversy theme is now getting even more personal. We are seeing the redemption. We are seeing the rebellion. Satan is coming to bring the people against God and at the same time God is busy redeeming us and we are not paying for that. Yes, what does the Bible say in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21? Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in your name have cast out devils? Mm -hmm. And in your name have done many wonderful works? And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. That is in verse 23. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. 24. Continue. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine, whosoever hears then and does them, and does them, mm -hmm. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Mm -hmm. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and winds blew, and beat upon that house, mm -hmm. and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Mm -hmm. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does what? And does them not mm -hmm. shall be likened unto a foolish man mm -hmm. which built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house mm -hmm. and it fell and we great was the there. fall of it. Thank you very much. We are seeing some two people who have built. The Bible does not say that they built the house and it fell. The house was built and it stood. 
when you look at the two houses, you'll not easily distinguish between which one was built on a farm foundation and which one was just built on the on a, on a less farm foundation. Now, what happens? These houses, you, can, you cannot distinguish them. There is no way to tell the difference between the two completed houses until when the rains come. When the rains come, the floods flow and something terrible happens to the one who did not build his foundation strongly in the rock. When you read 1 Corinthians, you will find chapter 10 verse around 1 to 4 there, you will be told that this rock is who? Christ. Is Jesus Christ. Christ. So when we build our foundation in Jesus Christ, how do we build it? It is by doing the word. The Bible says that any person who hears this word and he does them. It does not say any person who hears and by faith is saved. Mm -hmm. A person who hears, then he does what? He does them. Now, is that salvation by works? No. no it's not. It is, it is a token. It's just a token of our allegiance to God. When we have heard, then we do. We practice it. And even uh, in a place in, in the book of James, um, James there, we, we are being told that somebody is telling you, show me your faith and mm -hmm. I show you, you, my works. My faith by my works. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll show you. When you look at a person showing faith and another one showing works, you will go for the one who's showing works and you'll say that this one is the one who has more faith. Mm -hmm. Because faith without works is what? Dead. Is dead. And here we are seeing actually that faith without works is very much dead. Now, um, I think because of time I will not go far. Let's just compare. Look at that analogy of Christ. Doing the work is like building on a firm foundation of Christ. Not doing the, the, the faith which you have had from Christ is like building upon the sand. I welcome my brother to continue the final two topics. Thank you very much. Just in case um, our viewer has forgotten, we are dealing with the teachings of Jesus Christ in relation to the theme of rebellion or the great controversy. Mm -hmm. And we began where Jesus is saying, come and I will give you rest. rest. Mm -hmm. And then he is also saying, uh, take my yoke because it's easy. I'm meek. You will get rest upon me. Then we are getting his teachings from the parables. First of all, the parable of the sower, which we have seen, and then the parable of the rich, I mean the, the wise builder and the foolish builder. Mm -hmm. And uh, now when Jesus was incepting his ministry, he began his ministry in a very long sermon recorded in Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew chapter 7. And uh, in Matthew chapter 5, he speaks about the Beatitudes first, then compares the Christians with light, then compares them with salt, mm -hmm. two important commodities, then speaks of the importance of the law in verse 17, then 20 says that, speaks of uh, the law, that morality being, uh, being determined by what also is in the mind, not only the actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now somewhere in verse chapter 7, he's telling us something else. What was Jesus teaching when he said, do not judge? Uh, some people do not get this difference between judging a person or an individual, judging an individual or judging the wrong that an individual has done. Mm -hmm. Let us go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. Verse 1, the Bible says, mm -hmm. Judge not that you be not judged. Mm -hmm. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you met, it shall be measured to you again. Mm -hmm. And why behold you the mote that is in your brother's eye, but considers not the beam that is in your own eye? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Jesus is saying that do not judge your brother. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a person who can see a, a small dust in the eye of my brother here, Kenani. But then a very big hood is in front of my own eye but I cannot be able to see it. Jesus said that do not judge because of two main reasons. Me, ideally I can speak of two main reasons. One of them is that that which we judge from our, our neighbors or our brothers or that one which we condemn from our brothers is the same same thing that we do. Now what's the use of saying do not do this and behind the scenes you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another reason which Jesus spoke about is that uh, we normally, when we, we, we normally exaggerate when we 
we say that we are correcting others in the name of rebuking them and it 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 ends us it ends up at judging them mm. that is creating a certain attention to them removing off their attention from you to them just look at what so and so has done if it were me i could not do it but that that is now trying to come back making you an accuser of your brethren and uh, in the great controversy team who is the accuser of brethren the is devil. the devil mm-hmm. you are now becoming an agent or or, or, or an angel mm-hmm. of the devil mm-hmm. in becoming an accuser of your brethren but there is a counsel from apostle paul when he speaks to us about correcting it doesn't mean that you keep quiet when you see something wrong happening no uh, there is a difference between correcting and exactly. judging yeah. mm-hmm. he says in galatians chapter 6 let's read that i guess galatians chapter 6 verse 1 and verse 2 galatians chapter 6 verse 1 and verse 2 The Bible says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual restore such an an one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Yes, mm-hmm. verse 2. Verse 2 says, mm-hmm. Bear ye one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. Thank you very much. Paul is saying if a man is overtaken in a fault mm-hmm. or has messed up somewhere, you who are spiritual you who has not fallen and your neighbor has fallen mm. restore such bring them back to repentance in a way of meekness be meek be very humble why should you be very humble you consider that you are, you also may we fall yeah. we are prone to falling but when we don't consider that and we we say that by our own strength we can be able to do it we will just fall but when we restore such in a meekness of heart then we will have corrected them properly it will not be seen as judging actually it can't be judging it is correcting sure. yeah i like the way jesus corrected corrected the individuals who had messed remember jesus telling the woman who was adulterous i go and sin no more mm-hmm. does it mean that he did not condemn her no alimwambia go and sin no more that is what he told the woman ne enenda na usifanye dhambi tena i no longer condemn you where are your accusers they are not here i will also not condemn you go and sin no more then let's let's uh, also look at another aspect so actually to summarize that one jesus teaching in the in the great controversy theme on not judging he is telling us let us not be in the devil's position of being accusers of our brethren mm-hmm. and then another thing is the greatest promise that jesus gave us uh in this life as we wait for his second coming because we wait for his second coming there is a promise that he left with his disciples and it is a promise all christians and all who desire to come to repentance should be able to embrace Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 A very great promise he said I am with you always let us look 28 at it. verse 20 yes from 19 says go ye therefore and teach all nations mm-hmm. baptizing them in the name of the father mm-hmm. and the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things that whatsoever I have commanded you you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world amen amen what does it feel that to hear that god is always with us it seems a very simple statement but it's not mm-hmm. it's a very great statement that god is always with us to the end of the world and actually he has always been with us it's us who have never seen him being close to us mm-hmm. when he is commissioning the disciples telling them go everywhere starting from Jerusalem and go everywhere I'm always with you that is a promise which he gives to them once again he has always been with them Jesus Christ has uh, was there in the past uh he's there today will be there tomorrow he has always been with us when you read Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 when kings in Judah are looking for a sign 
of a Messiah. Through Isaiah, God tells them, Behold, the Lord will give you a sign. A virgin will give birth to a child, mm -hmm. and his name shall be Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel means God with us. Of the four gospel writers, it is Matthew who records uh, the fulfillment of that prophecy mm -hmm. in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, reminding them that God is always with them. Amen. By the way, did you realize that all over history, God has always told his uh, servants that I'm always with you? Sure. Remember, Abraham, I will be with you mm -hmm. and your descendants, mm -hmm. and from your seed, all nations shall, shall be, be blessed. blessed. Mm -hmm. Remember Jacob, when he was running away from his brother Esau, after repenting his sins, God promised to be with him. Mm -hmm. That is in Genesis 28, verse 15. Yes, he's telling them, I'll be with you always. The way I was with your father Abraham and your father Isaac. Then Isaac himself, actually, after the death of Abraham, uh, in Genesis 26, he is promising also to be with him. Come to Moses with all those plethora of excuses. Mm. God told him, no, don't mind what you will speak. I am with you. you. Yeah. After the death of Moses, there is Joshua. Joshua is told in uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, I have, have I not commanded you, be of good courage. I am with, I'm with you. you. It's, a, it's a same theme which has always been there uh, from the past. It is there with us now. The same promise, Jesus has it, that we shall always be with us. Even, we, even when we are in this great controversy between us and the devil, because by the virtue of choosing Christ, we become enemies to the devil. God promises to be with us. Uh, I would wish to finish this by looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. There is a promise again, just echoing what I'm speaking about here, or what we are speaking five, about here. The uh, Hebrews chapter Hebrews, 13, verse 5 here. Yeah. The Bible says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, mm -hmm. and be consent with such things as you have. Mm. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Mm. Yeah, he is referring to the same promise that God said, I will never leave thee, I will never forsake thee. That is the same way of saying, I am with you. Mm -hmm. And then, there is an observation in verse 8 concerning Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. Amen. Amen. He always is with us. Uh, when we travel towards heaven, even when we are in this great controversy, fighting against the devil, he is always with us. Thank you, Thank you very much. A question is asked, where have you laid your foundations? As you are thinking of that, we come to the end of this program. I've been your host, Keep Quiet, Kevin Matelong. May God bless you. Amen. Zakana sada kamali yake Mwili nanoa ni takatifu Tuzirudi enji ya zaimani